Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to another edition of Arochuku Never Conducted Slave Rates, a reply path 4. And our very important notice to you, our dear viewer, that it is never our intention to offend anyone with our videos. It is not also our intention to suggest, insinuate or preach hate towards any group, race, tribe or person. There is also no propaganda or any deliberate attempt to misinform anyone with our videos. Please look for the books, journals, magazines or other publications or sources referenced and study them yourself. Remember, Sokoto bordered on the north by the Sahara, on the east by Bono, on the south by the regions of the Benue and on the west by Nupe and Gando. A few years ago, it was the largest slave trading empire in the world and even today half its population consists probably of slaves carl w kum 1907 and from the book the sudan a short compendium of facts and figures about the land of darkness and from william hurt but are these poor africans when brought to the west indies instructed in religion no it is industriously concealed from them. Nay, it is not long since they were bought and sold in England like beasts of burden. Recall from previous parts of this series that we examined the group falsely accused by the slave masters and his slave hunting partners as being behind the slave raids. We also saw how the slave hunters act as enemies within among Negroes till today. We also saw how the slave masters ruled countries in what was Negroland and Guinea through his brainless foot soldiers who were his slave hunting partners and how the slave master writes articles hiding behind his foot soldiers and we examined the group Arrow falsely accused by the slave masters and his slave hunting partners as being behind the slave trade specifically. We also saw how the slave master and his slave hunting partners work closely together to sustain the lies against the arrow. We also saw the descendants of the slave hunters claiming that the arrow could have conducted slave raids even when they did not have a standing army. However, we got some comments from the previous videos, especially from the slave hunting partners of the slave master or their descendants as the case may be insisting that the arrow could have been the slave hunters remember the foot soldiers understand that the negroes listen to whatever master is saying so they continue telling a lie even when it's been proven to be a lie they will continue saying it believing that when a lie is told often enough it begins to look like the truth however before we go into the response proper let us see if we can have a little background to at least understand that the slaves couldn't have been sold but were rather captured because there is no way you can come and sell a man or a woman with his pregnant wife sell them to different places and they agree above all who did you pay did you pay the man or the woman or who was paid actually above all sometimes you hear them tell you it's african kings who is the king if you notice the negroes had no earthly king they were actually based on a theocratic system which is subject of a different video and remember this is well coded in the bible where the people allegedly went to god however they did that to give them a king which is what you saw in saul and the slave master was even generous enough to tell them what the kings were supposed to be doing like we told you believe it or not the book is more of a code than the word of any god but that being said, let us at least prove or see that it was hunt, raid and capture and nothing more or less than that by referencing observations on the slave trade and a description of some part of the coast of Guinea during a voyage made in 1787 and 1788 in company with Dr. A. Sperman and Captain Arrhenius by C. B. Wattstrom and this was published in 1789 and there we can see an account of newly captured slaves. In this situation of affairs, 
the French were obliged to have recourse to their old friends, the Moors. These, who had before shown themselves so ready on such occasions, were no less ready and active on this. They set off in parties to surprise the unoffending Negroes. Now remember, if the Negroes were the same as the Moors, there is no way the Moors would have been coming to raid them. Above all, the story would have been Negroes coming to raid Negroes. And it goes further to say, and to carry among them all the calamities of war. Many unfortunate prisoners were sent and for some time continued to be sent in. I was once curious enough to wish to see some of those that had just arrived. I applied to the director of the company who conducted me to the slave prisons. I there saw the unfortunate captives chained two and two together by the foot. Please remember that all those companies you see there today, from the likes of Shell to Chevron, Toto, Halliburton, all those companies you see there, they are all products of the slave trade. They came from the slave trading business. That is why you still see in places like Nigeria that when you threaten things like oil, it is the army that will come after you. It is the same thing that they are doing and soon they will be changing to something else. If Oye has come to its end, they will change to something else and you will still see the same group doing the same thing. It doesn't matter if you believe us, you only need to research it. That's all you need to do. And as you see the companies there today, drilling oil, exploring oil and stealing all the resources with their slave hunting partners, providing them with the cover they need, that's the same thing. That's the same way they hunted and captured the Negroes as slaves. Then they claimed it was African kings, which is why you see their foot soldiers and their slave hunting partners all over this channel trying to claim it was a group they massacred then. So reading this account, this was somebody who out of curiosity wanted to see what the slaves look like when they are newly captured. Remember at that time, the slave master claimed that the Negroes were not human. You need to bear this important point in mind. You should be able to ask yourself, for example, let's say in a country like Nigeria, where a soldier may be hungry, his children out of school, the barracks are dilapidated, and then you come out to say, let him be paid more and they will command him to come and kill you and they will obey because they have been conditioned with that level of madness same way they were conditioned as slave hunters during the slave trade but then we see in this account going forward it says the mangled bodies of several of them whose wounds were still bleeding exhibited a most shocking spectacle and their situation may be much easier conceived than described. Now you are telling us that a king sold somebody, sold his pregnant wife, sold his children and sold everyone else. Why not just ask yourself, how could they have done that? Do they just send for the man and his wife and they come and they say from today, follow these uh, Europeans or Arabs, you are now their slave. They tell you that they were having some organized bands of thugs that were capturing and raiding them, which still doesn't make sense because the economy of the area at that time was more of trade by barter. So what were the soldiers paid with? If they told you that they gave them drinks and they agreed, that is not correct because the accounts are showing something totally different. So here at least we see what it looked like. And this author, writing in 1789, is telling us that the condition was much easier conceived than described, and that the director of the company, however, used his best endeavors to console them. And so soon we shall be challenging these descendants of the slave hunters to give us an account of where the slaves were sold, and let us see how many of such accounts they will get. And at least we'll see how four or five hundred people could have just been brought and sold and they won't run away. And so now that you have seen a little account of how they were acquired, let us now look at the comments from one of our viewers that says his name is Mr. Himself alone. We can almost certainly say he must be a Fulani or an Arab, but he claims to be an African American, which we doubt. And our reason for doubting it is because an African American cannot be defending one group when the account is saying they did the selling, they did the hunting, they did the capturing. 
Instead, he is now helping the slave master to propagate his lies. But that being said, his comment says, At the Renaissance, I can only tell you what men like Dr. Origi said. He has an article, a PDF, called The Drums of War and Heroism, we are based largely on oral traditions, the arrow hired Abam and other cross river Igbo to conduct raids. Remember, he has been insisting that it was done by the arrow. We had proven it beyond any reasonable doubt that it couldn't have been them because the account do not say that. But like we told you, believe it or not, the slave hunters' descendants are still working to defend both their forefathers as well as the slave master. So he wants to exonerate the slave master from his atrocities while framing another group that were innocent of it. And going forward, he says, think about it. If the president of the US wants to attack another country, does he go himself? Does anyone in Congress go? No, they send other people. The Abam and some other cross river groups like to take heads as trophies, but usually not female. Now you see how senseless this comment can be. If you cut off somebody's head, there is no way you can sell the person as a slave anymore. This was the same user that told us that to get a slave, you go hit him on the head, he passes out, and then you can carry him to go and sell. That should tell you exactly how their reasoning works and why the slave master was able to get them to be capturing the slaves for him. You need to understand how they reason to understand what may be going on. And he goes further to say, that meant a greater chance of being spared, being killed, but still being sold. The Fulani live as far west as Senegal. They only got to Hausa country recently. They did not establish the Sokoto Caliphate until the 1800s and there are reports of Igbo slaves going back to 1627. Even if the Fulani captured some Igbo, I am not saying they did not. To say that they captured them before they found Sokoto or founded Sokoto does not make sense. This comment alone should tell you exactly who they are and how they reason. He believes that because Sokoto was established in 1804, the Fulani just got there and then established Sokoto, forgetting that the slave master in an attempt to help the Fulani stop their slave hunting and slave raiding, that was how they established Sokoto. So we shall use this his comment to show you exactly how the slave hunters descendants reason and how they defend Massa so you can understand why the slave master is still able to use them till tomorrow morning against the negroes please bear in mind that the negroes couldn't have raided themselves they didn't have a standing army so there was no way they could have done it and that's why the slave master is lying about it telling you it was a cell somebody sold another we ask you if you're listening to this can you tell us how someone else could have sold you if you doubt what we're saying just try to picture you your family your wife and your kids how you could have been sold. Do they come and capture you? Assuming we agree they come to capture you. Then you keep working until you either escape or they get you killed. So how many other people in the village could they have captured at the same time? Do they just capture one person and they keep going and everyone will be looking at them and clapping at them or everybody will run away? If everyone runs away, that means there must be something they come with that makes people run away. We shall look at it in a different video. But our interest is for you to see their views, their arguments in defense of Massa. And then he goes further to say, at the Renaissance, dates are key. Sokoto was established in 1804, who was enslaving Igbo like Equiano. Who was taken in the 1700s you see how their alibi works if you remember very well their previous alibi was that the fulanis were also sold so because they were also sold then they couldn't have been the ones behind it but when they were asked to tell us who sold the fulanis they couldn't answer like we told you if you want to understand what we're talking about these are people that cannot pass any exam they have to be carried over you know when you carry over a course and when you're in school they say you didn't do well you have to carry it over to the next level but in their own case they carry over the student they don't carry over courses they carry over the student and they keep on going until they graduate but they will still have to be put in power because the slave master needs them there in order to continue subjugating and enslaving the negroes which is subject of a different video but let's just move forward 
And so, taking note of the fact that he keeps claiming that Sokoto was established in 1804 without remembering that the Fulanese were there before they could have established Sokoto, in order to further show you what their arguments look like, how they reason, and what they say, let us reference the Nigeria Handbook containing statistical and general information respecting the colony and protectorate compiled by AC Bonds of the Central Secretary's Office, Lagos, and this was published 1919, and there we are told that the Fulani are a remarkable people who, before the advent of the British, had established themselves as the ruling race throughout what is now the northern provinces. Their origin is obscure, but it is known that during the 13th century, how Fulani entered Hausa land from the west, there seems to have been always a distinction between the purely pastoral shepherd or Kao Fulani who occupied the position of a nomad peasant and the aristocratic or ruling Fulani. At the beginning of the 19th century, the latter had become the dominating people and conquered the Hausa states which they at first governed with a high degree of moderation and integrity, adopting the existing Hausa system of law and taxation. So our interest is for you to see when they got there. During the 13th century, the Kao Fulani had already arrived, but he is trying to tell us that because Sokoto was established in 1804, then that's when they got there. Our interest is to show you how they reason at least, so that when you read their comments, you don't believe them, you should understand that they only argue from a point of how can we lie in order to defend our forefathers and massa that's all they are doing and also going forward you may remember that they claim that the arrow sold millions of ebos remember that's a very big lie and the only way you can easily understand it is that the number of ebos at that time or even in the area based on their estimates is by far less than the total number of negro slaves sold and remember, Igbos also meant all the slaves exported from the Bight of Benin and Biafra. So there is no way you can use what the slave master now claims to be Igbo, like southeastern Nigeria, to claim that that is Igbo. It used to be the entire Bight of Biafra and Bight of Benin as it were. Every slave exported from there was referred to as Igbo, while those exported from the Gold Coast was classified as Chromantes and those from Luango as Mandingos, whatever they choose to call them, but those sites are fewer. And so here we see that the native population of Nigeria, which is estimated at about 16 and one quarter millions, is divided into a large number of tribes, speaking different languages and possessing different characteristics. Now, if the total population of what you call Nigeria was 16 and one quarter million at that time, and this was barely as at 1919, which was about less than 20 years after the slave trade had ended. What does that tell you? Could it have been possible that they got millions of Igbos from a tiny portion that had less than the total number of slaves exported in it? The answer would be no. Please remember that their food soldiers can tell you that they exported 300 people from a community of only 20 people. And you are expected to believe their lie. If you don't believe their lie, they kill you. That's who they are. It doesn't change. And so, to give it a better background, reading further, you see that it says, In the northern provinces, the Hausa race, which is chiefly Mohammedan, is the most important numerically. The Hausa is wholly black but not Negroid in type. Remember we tell you always that the Hausas are not Negroes. The slave master actually wrote what they used them for. They used them in the military and police. And that should tell us that they probably were in the army as slave hunters at that time as well. And going forward here, we see that at the beginning of the 19th century, the later, that's the Fulani, had become the dominating people and conquered the Hausa states, which they at first governed with a high degree of moderation and integrity, adopting the existing Hausa systems of law and taxation. They were Mohammedans and Sokoto became their religious and political headquarters. By degrees, however, the power of the central authority waned and the administration of justice almost ceased. 
but under the control and supervision of the British, the Fulani had proved capable of governing and dispensing justice with wisdom and integrity and intelligence and broad-mindedness of the Fulani emirs has contributed in no small degree to the success of the British administration. Please remember that those places are how the slave masters want them to be. We shall look at that in a subsequent video. Our interest is to show you who the slave hunters were and who the slave master works with till today and why they are interested in lying about the arrow. So those that buy into their lie, that's why the so-called African-Americans somehow believe that their siblings could have sold them. You need to understand how smart the slave master is when it comes to lies and propaganda. However, further down, our interest here is where it says the two chief tribes in the colony and southern provinces are the Igbos and Yorubas, the latter inhabiting Lagos and its hinterland and the former the eastern provinces. Of the total population of seven three quarter millions in the colony and southern provinces, it is estimated that about three millions are Igbos and two millions Yorubas. An extract from a report on the last census, 1911, taken in southern Nigeria, is contained in Appendix 1, and from this will be seen the large number of smaller tribes that are spread over the southern provinces. The Yorubas had an ancient system of law and are the most highly developed of the natives of the southern provinces. Their state capitals are now among the largest towns in the country. Please remember that the slave master created all these things you are seeing, including Yoruba. It was created circa 1808. So he creates any group, any Negro group, and gives them a name and gives them a history. That's how he operates, which if you research, you will find it out yourself. However, in this instance, we are looking at the population given. And you may remember that if we reference very quickly the African slave trade and its remedy by Thomas Buxton, Esquire, published 1840, we see that from the birth of Biafra and Benin alone, 140,000 slaves were exported in one year alone. So if we take this to be the total population of the entire area, that should tell you how many people they had taken away before that period but again our interest in looking at these numbers is so you understand when the foot soldiers and the descendants of the slave hunters come here to tell us that they are also rebels because they didn't have horses they didn't have camels they couldn't move around and they couldn't leave what was typically what you call southeastern nigeria today then there's no way they could have gotten the number in question from that tiny area we shall look at the movement of people when they were running away from the slave hunters at that time. So you understand how those that live on water got there as well. But our interest is for you to see that the foot soldiers, their lack of humanity and common sense is visible in everything you do with them. The moment you bring facts, you will see how they argue blindly too. And going further from the book we referenced earlier, the Nigerian handbook, we see that while the southern portion of Nigeria was being brought under the control of the British government, the country to the north was being developed by the Royal Niger Company, which had been granted its charter in 1886. Remember that they were in the north and capturing slaves from the south, but then they had to ship them from the ocean. That's why you have the slave port in Boni, you have the one in Calabar, and then you have the one in Badagri. They were very close to the waters from where they were being shipped. The slave master and his foot soldiers were doing the hunting themselves. The armies you see were the slave hunters. They just remodeled and rebranded them. That's why you see that the army is as useless as you can imagine. But when you ask an average conditioned Negro or the foot soldiers, they will tell you the army is protecting the country. But they don't notice that that same army does not attack Fulani herdsmen. But it will attack you if you were to talk about freedom. The same way if you were to tamper with anything to do with oil. Because their duty is to also protect the interest of Massa. And going further, it says, Treaties were made with the native chiefs and trading and administrative stations established. In 1897, Nupe and Elorin were subdued. And the same year, 
the legal status of slavery was declared abolished throughout the territories of the company. So you notice that they abolished by 1897. Please remember that wherever they capture slaves from cannot be from their immediate kingdom. Because if you captured all your people, your kingdom will become empty and you need an army to also capture them. Our interest is to show you why they are food soldiers are busy and all over this place trying to tell you it was the arrow and mentioning some phantom groups groups that no longer exist anywhere they may have been destroyed or desolated with slave raids but they want to use them and lie that's why you notice that this man he keeps telling us in okun and some other groups that we don't even know whether they exist or not we are the slave hunters but we never tell you about the nigerian army that was a slave hunter army as well and then he goes further to say in view of french encroachments the british government decided to raise a native imperial force and in 1898 this task was confided to colonel lugard who had previously negotiated several treaties with native chiefs on behalf of the royal niger company now if they had nothing to do with army in the capture of slaves why did they need troops you see that there were french troops forget whatever you think the united states is still a plantation you may not understand it unless you go and read these histories very very well and understand what could have transpired but if you still believe that it was possible for a man to have been sold just like that with his pregnant wife and his entire family then you have no need to watch these videos and he goes further to say a conflict between the British and French troops seemed imminent but an arrangement was at last come to and the boundary settled. On the 1st January 1900, the transfer of the Niger Company's territories to the Crown took place, these territories becoming the protectorate of Northern Nigeria with Colonel Lugard as the first High Commissioner, the Emirates of Contagora Yola Bauchi, Bonu, Kanu, and Sokoto, but these are not our interests. Our interest in this particular page is where you saw that there could have been a conflict between British troops and French troops in what you call Nigeria today. So when you hear things like Biafra and Ambazonia and you notice that the slave masters are all not interested, it's because they still consider the place as a slave farm. Everyone there is considered a slave and they do it through their brainless foot soldiers. Like we tell you, believe it or not, they are foot soldiers, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. And the slave master knows this perfectly. That's why you see this guy that claims to be African American, but he's defending one group against the other. Even without being told, anybody that has been following the comments here, we know very clearly that he is likely Fulani. And just for the balance, from the same book, we see where he mentioned Arrow and he says two years later an expedition subjugated and disarmed the Arrow tribe which held paramount power over a large territory between the Niger and Cross Rivers. So our interest in bringing this is for you to see where they mentioned both the Arrow and the Fulani in the same book but there was no single mention of them being behind slave raids or raiding or selling any slaves anywhere and now we want you to compare what you just read about the arrow he claimed they held paramount power like we told you these were just priests they were just leaders or rulers there it is part of the british corruption which you see in nigeria today when any leader is removed by their foot soldiers they will accuse that leader of everything you can imagine on earth no matter how good or bad he was they are going to accuse him of corruption, they are going to accuse him of stealing, they are going to accuse him of anything, albeit falsely anyway. That was one thing the slave master taught his brainless foot soldiers, which is what they do to today. So we want you to see what we are going to read here and compare it with what they said about the arrow. And he says, prior to the amalgamation, the British native policy in what are now the northern provinces of Nigeria differed almost entirely from that in the south. A large portion of the people of the northern provinces, probably about half, occupying the Fulani and Bornu states, were the inheritors of an ancient civilization based on the religion of Islam, which prior to the assumption of the government by the British crown in 1900, had deteriorated into a rule of tyranny and extortion. Slave raiding 
had assumed gigantic proportions and the armies of the emirs had depopulated vast areas which had previously been inhabited by a dense and industrious pagan population. So if you notice all those people you see, the Negroes actually, are moving down south. And that is why you see the slave master and his foot soldiers came with the what they call global warming and the desertification and all those rubbish to force them to be coming in pursuit of the Negroes. Nobody can say what the Negroes could have done to them. It might be part of eugenics, but our interest is to show you why you see their foot soldiers all over this place, why YouTube will be against us, while their media will also be against Biafran and Bazonia. So you understand that it is a sophisticated conspiracy between the slave master and his slave hunting partners. It doesn't change. You just need to read the historical records and you see it very clear. And so permit us to ask these our viewers, including the one that made the comment, if all the emirs were Fulani and they had armies with which they raided for slaves, can you then tell us where the armies of the Arrow went to? Because they couldn't have been getting their own slaves without an army. Today we see the Nigerian army, which were the remnants of the slave hunting militia of the Fulani emirs of the north, with which they raided and exported slaves from what you call the south. So we now challenge you, you claim that Ab Abam warriors or whatever you choose to call them, tell us where they were from and where they are today. Who disbanded them or how did they disappear? Because if you knew that they could have raided for slaves when there is no record of such a thing anywhere, then you should also be able to tell us where they disappeared to.